Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Hope everybody's doing well. Today, we are uh, you know, joined by somebody who is amazing, very, very extremely talented, uh, award-winning Lakota musical artist as well. She's a mix set. The talent is amazing. Stella Standing Bear, thank you for joining us. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm doing good. Studio looking real nice. You know, studio vibes. I, I like I like it. I can see the creativity cooking in there. Absolutely. It's um actually a studio here on the Pine Res- Reservation, the first studio here at the Ogallala Lakota Art Space. That's so fire. That's see, let's just get it straight into it. I'm already getting it. <laughs> so, you know, basically your dreams are reality right now. These these are things that you dreamt of doing since you were little, um, since you were a child. And like I would love to know now. How does it feel to be in, in that space where your dreams are now a reality and you're using your platform in a way that is just so authentic and powerful? It's um it's it's like a, a blessing and it's surreal and I'm super grateful for everything because this is something I've been working towards a, a very long time. Um since I was young, I knew this is exactly what I wanted to do. And of course, with every journey, there's gonna be ups and downs and twists and turns and stuff so I just kept consistent and and kept pushing through any hardships that life may have thrown at me and and just trust the process I trusted the process and I still do knowing that everything will work out the way um the way it's supposed to so uh it's it's a great feeling to to be doing music full-time and yeah I'm super excited for for the future as well I love it. And I think that what's key is you said trusting that process because mm-hmm. in trusting that process, you kind of like replace some of that stress and worry with like some faith that everything is working in your favor at the end of the day. So I, I love that. Um, and speaking to that, speaking of everything working in your favor, you're also a two-time winning artist of the International Indigenous Hip Hop Award Show, uh, especially when it happened earlier this year. What does it feel like to win these awards and accolades in, you know, in front of a, a room full of people that just you know what I mean? Like they're so so amazing, and like are seeing how much you're like you know growing in your career and your talent build, and you know reaching those heights. It was a it was definitely a, a blessing for sure. This was my first time I ever been nominated for any type of music awards, let alone uh, left the country. It was held in Vancouver, BC, so that was my first time. You know, getting my passport type of thing, and and nice. attending the award show. I met a lot of amazing indigenous artists um, from different types of uh, different tribes and um, different places. So it was, it was really awesome. And yeah, it, yeah, it was a great, it was a great feeling to, to bring home two awards and um, yeah. (laughs) What is it, what does it feel like to represent, you know, like the Lakota people when you're doing that? I know all of these first time moments, you know, I can tell you by the smile on your face, how memorable it is just to think about, you know, how you felt in that moment. What did it mean to like do that for the people? Of course, of course. So like I, I didn't bring these uh, awards home just for myself or my family or my team, but I also brought them back um, for my reservation and my community. Um, we are, if not one of the poorest uh, reservations in the United States. And there's a lot of poverty and, and suicide rates are high and, um, you know, that was one of the reasons why I did decide to move back is to help my community. Uh, I always believe in being the change that that you want to see. So I'm being the change that I want to see. So bringing these awards home is, is also bringing bringing that hope and that inspiration and that motivation of like, um, it, it doesn't like, it doesn't like where we come from is going to be tough. But like we get to decide on where we want to go and what we want to do. You know, we can't let our our environment or our past um, dictate our future. I love that. And and I, I want to add, while we mentioned that, too, I want to add, too, because, you know, this is Community Voices, where we want to empower the voices and, and, you know, continue to make that change. We'll be donating to the Oak. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do my best to say this. If I mess up on this word, you help me out. Uh, the <laughs> Oglala Lakota Art Space. Did I say that yep. right? Yeah, you got it. I'm not gonna Same. try to say it again because I'll mess up if I say it again. <laughs> um, you got it. We're donating, uh, you know, uh, to, to the foundation as well to continue the mission. Um, and you're, you're speaking to just how important is that change and how, you know, the things that you see daily and how how hard things can get, and how tough it can be, how tough it can be. Um, mm-hmm. Would you mind kind of just speaking to just like the importance of like resources like the art space and those things for people to kind of like you know 
have an outlet to express creativity or to engage with other people or just kind of have those moments where they can get away from whatever is going on and express themselves in healthy and engaging ways. Of course, of course. This is the first um, studio here on the reservation, but not only is it a studio where anybody could come and create and, and learn um, we have instruments from the guitar, bass guitar, various different types of microphones, electric, um, and acoustic drum sets. So um, we've been working on the studio, but not only the studio um, in itself in the art space, but we also have workshops, um, uh, writing workshops, Lakota astrology, um, sewing, beading, all types of work sh- workshops. So it's great to to come over here and learn we also provide like um, gas cards that will help with transportation and as well as meals for some of our classes as well. I love that. You really you really cover all the areas of expression, music, art. Uh, I mean, there's just so many areas that y'all really cover and kind of cultivate that within that moment. So I, I love that that's what it's doing because those kind of things are so important because you just never realize mm-hmm. what somebody is going through and the escape that this may be for them or the trajectory that this one moment or place will put them going forward in their future. So I love, I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, exactly. Cause music, music is an outlet. Art is a, is an outlet, a way to express yourself in a, in a positive way instead of turning to the streets or turning to violence. Um, you could ex- channel those emotions and, and put it into art. That's what I do. You know, like I would, I, I always say that music is my diary, like whatever I'm going through at the time. It's like, I could like vent, you know? Yeah. <laughs> vent on it. a song. I love it. It's powerful. It's powerful. And I think that's, you know, of course, that it's origins. So that's what it's meant to do too, with that expression and sharing that story and things like that. Um, I, I want to ask you this question. I know for me, speak for me personally, um, you know, I learned more about, you know, like, Black history as I got older too and, and embracing my roots and things like that. I would love to know for you growing up, you know, at what point did you kind of have that desire to learn more about your heritage and culture and um, how does that, knowing that and having that knowledge drive you today? So, um, you know, I was raised in Salt Lake City, Utah, and uh, that wasn't on my reservation. So as far as like, you know, my culture, my heritage, specific to my tribe and my reservation was it something that was always in my life growing up but I I will say that um in the school system in Utah um for what would take basically the Native American kids we had our own uh, guidance counselor and we would go on these field trips where we're able to see traditional dancing where we're able to um you know see different uh guest speakers who are indigenous or, or that are in the Olympics or play sports so that's how it was um that's how I learned a bit about the Native American culture um as a whole but I didn't really start learning my my heritage of the Lakota until I moved back here which would which would be last August but since then learned how to bead um I made my first ribbon dress I went to a wachipi or a powwow also some ceremonies and learning the language as well so um Stay, living here actually has helped me get closer to my roots. That's one of the reasons why I did want to move here because I felt connected and it's opportunity to learn and and to grow. I love that. And I, I want to ask the too, because I think too, I know for me, it's like you learn, you learn a little bit early, but not, I would say it's like not enough. And then when you get older yeah. and you learn it, you just, you take the information in, but it, it, the way that you, channel what you learned and express what you've learned and like the way that you approach things with the knowledge of what you learned just hits different when you're getting older and things like that because you can just really try to have an impact and speak more to it and understand it and all those kind of things so I, I love that you mentioned that like you know how important it has been for you to have some of that knowledge early on but then come back home and really tap into it from like a different perspective compared to when you were younger so I, I love that mm-hmm. and you know with with so many things going on in this world today um, I mean, there's a lot going on, but I would love to know too. There's so many things to fight for. Um, mm-hmm. at what point, like, what, what is it the biggest? What would you say you've learned is the biggest fight for the Native American culture today? I would say just having rights and having a voice and being included in certain conversations when it comes to land, especially when it comes to conserving our land and caring for our planet. 
I definitely feel like we need uh, more rights and and power and in those areas, especially with the pipelines and et cetera. Like you said, there's a long list of issues in the world that uh, needs attention. Yes, I love, I, I love that. Yeah, now that was such a I'm gonna make sure I'm right with my words here. That's such a powerful moment because it's so much, so many emotions and energy, and you see the fight, but then you see uh, the defiance of like all those things. So I could totally see how 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 big and how important that is. And I think one thing too, though, within this month, this is Native uh, Native American History Month too. Within this month, I know it's really about also celebrating the culture and understanding like, the richness of of that culture and heritage. And I think it's very important for people in general to do their own research and do their own understanding instead of relying on the people of the culture to give that information. So I, I think it's really important for everybody to do their own work. But on top mm-hmm. of that as well, there's also always more that we can do, more that we can learn. Um, what does it kind of mean to you? Well, first, what, is, what does this month mean to you? And at the same time, what do you think people can kind of do to help stand with the culture and help support and help lend that voice and things like that? Um, what, what Native American Heritage Month means to me is, is celebrating our culture, celebrating our ancestors and where we are right now and, and being proud, being proud to be Native. Um, that's what it means to me and, and sharing knowledge and sharing the culture and spending time with, with family and, and really taking this time to, to shine and, and amplify our voices as Native Americans. I love that. And then how do you, how do you think people can stand with, with, with the culture and help, you know, push the voice and the platform and, uh, and kind of like, have, have that allyship with Native American history to make sure that Native Americans to make sure that, you know, they're also being fought for and being heard and being elevated and lifted. I would say um, um, educating oneself as well and, and sharing posts, you know, the, the the social media is a very big platform. And if there's any issues that may be going on this month or any knowledge or um, information, correct information, because I know there can be a lot of misinterpretation when it comes to our culture, but sharing the right information um, and spreading that awareness and that knowledge. I love it. Yeah, social media is such a powerful tool, but with that much power, I mean, that's a quote you know, whatever comic it is, but with a lot of power comes a lot of responsibility and social media is mm-hmm. one of those things where it's so powerful because of the reach it has, but then because of that reach, people can just, you know, say things or put out misinformation. So I, I love that, you mm-hmm. know, that is a space where we can utilize and help spread the voices, help spread the message, especially during times like, you know, <clears throat> where everything gets crucial in that worldwide attention where there's, like, there can be area of controlling a narrative getting that truth out there, lifting that voice, elevating that platform. So I, I love that you mentioned that. Um, On that note, I want to ask one more question. I want to respect your time as well, but I want to ask mm-hmm. a question and it kind of taps into that, um, that kind of concept that we're speaking to. If you had the world's full attention for five minutes, and I, I, I know you create music, so I know you've had their attention as well before, but <laughs> if you had their attention outside of music for five minutes, what would you tell them? I would say to to be kind to yourself and to be kind to others. Uh, love yourself and love others as well. Treat people how you would like to be treated. And um, let's see. Five minutes I is a long time. So you, you have to give <laughs> yeah. me five minutes, each, but the, the concept I, high level. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like nowadays, you know, five minutes is kind of like a long time for most people, especially with social media. You can get like three oh, yeah. seconds, 10 seconds max. So within that <laughs> three to 10 seconds max, it's uh, love yourself, love others, be kind to yourself, be kind to others and treat others how you would like to be treated. I love it. I got to reword that <laughs> timing on that a little bit. So I, I get you. Listen, thank <laughs> you so, so much for taking some time out to join us today. Um, we appreciate everything you do. We appreciate the work that you do, um, the enjoyment and love that you have for your heritage and culture, and not just within that for yourself, but what you're doing for other people in the culture and outside of it to just continue having that impact through your music and your work that you do. So I thank you very much for joining us and helping us help, uh, lend an able effort to that voice as well. Thank you so much for having me. And also thank you for the impactful work you do as well. Of course, we do our best. We try.